We now welcome in the CEO and co-founder of Athletes Unlimited, John Patrickoff. John, thanks so much for joining us. I want to start with just why is lacrosse the right fit for Athletes Unlimited? Yeah, uh, thanks for having me on. It's, it's great to be here. We we're so excited this uh, week to announce uh, Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse. Um, listen, this has been uh, a sport that we've had on our radar uh, since since much earlier in 2020. Um, we've been thinking hard about it. And it's clearly one of the fastest growing sports. Um, the interest in particular uh, among the growth in, women's, in the women's side of the game has it, been terrific to see. And, and as we got to spend more time on it, it just felt like the right sport uh, for where we want to head. Now, from a sustainability standpoint, how will athletes in limited lacrosse be able to be successful where previous professional women's lacrosse leagues haven't lasted more than a couple of seasons? Well, listen, I, I'm the first person to acknowledge, uh, you know, it's difficult to launch any new sports league. Um, so I go into the healthy dose of skepticism, but also a lot of enthusiasm and, and, and a lot of confidence. Um, we just came off our inaugural uh, softball season this past uh, August. It was a huge success. We were able to line up some incredible media partners, some incredible brand partners. Um, so I'm really confident, but we've also made some changes to the structure. Um, and I think those are going to uh, bode really well for our, our prospects. I mean, it's a condensed five-week season. Um, we're going to have the athletes all in market for that uh, for that entire time, which is really the first time that I know of that it's happened in the, in the in the pro game. And that model allows us not only to kind of elevate the quality of play because the players are going to be there, they're going to have a chance to practice all week. Also, just allows us to capture a lot of content, tell a lot of stories that I think fans are going to love. And so fans are going to be able to see uh, great games, great high-quality action on the field, but they're also going to get that storytelling off the field. And I think that's going to be a big recipe for 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 our athletes unlimited a business model now continuing on the topic of that model it's a bit unique um, an individual player scoring system then the top ranked players choose new teams each week how did that format come about and how did it work out for softball this summer yeah, so so this was really the, the foundational concept behind Athletes Unlimited. The concept is younger fans are following athletes more than they're following teams. Um, and we've seen that across some of the biggest pro, pro leagues. We know that's certainly been a model in the NBA for a long time now and part of their success. And we know so many fans are you know following their favorite player um, who, unfortunately, for better or for worse, you know, players have been moving around for, uh, on teams through free agency a lot. And, and as a result, um, a lot of fandoms player centric. So that was really the core idea that let's let's try to center a league not around creating teams out of kind of out of thin air, um, but really let's center around the players themselves. And it worked incredibly well around softball. Um, I should note that we have a, a unique scoring system, but the scoring system values team play. Uh, more than anything. So you get points for how well your team does and how well you do. And you have to be on winning teams. And so it worked incredibly well. The players loved it. They universally came away saying it was the best professional experience they've had in their lives. So it was awesome. Yeah, that's very cool feedback to get. You've said the players will be paid a base salary starting at $8,000. Plus, they have the chance to earn more money based on that individual leaderboard that you just discussed and a share of league profits for up to 20 years. How does that compare to what these players have received in the past? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't want to necessarily get into, into kind of what's happened in the past, but I think we all know that, um, you know, athletes in, in what we'll call so smaller sports and certainly uh, professional female athletes um, have a long way to go in order to be able to make enough money um, to, to be full-time pro athletes. And I think that's our vision at Athletes Unlimited for all the sports that we're in. Um, you know, volleyball is one of the sports that we're in. That's a, that's a place that people have been able to make a lot of money overseas, but not be able to play at home uh, in the United States. Um, but in sports like softball or lacrosse, these are sports that are wildly popular at the youth level, at the college level. Um, and we really believe that, that there deserves to be a platform, uh, and multiple platforms, by the way, that, that can help these athletes be full-time pro players. We know they're not going to be there this year, um, but that's our vision. That's what we're committed to and, and we're working towards. Now, how involved have the players been in developing the rules that will be used, which will be something between the traditional women's format and then the proposed Olympic rules? Yeah, this is the core of what we do at Athletes Unlimited and we're all about. So this is really very much a player-led league. Um, 
I am the CEO, but we work in each sport with what we call a player executive committee. Um, and the players on that committee are the ones who help recruit the other players. They identify who they want to bring into the league. Um, and then they help set the rules. Um, they work with us on commercial aspects of the business, everything from every policy and procedure. Um, to even during the softball league, you know, if we had a case and we didn't have many where there was a violation of the rules, it was this player executive committee that decided how they wanted to discipline their fellow players. So it's a really unique model. Um, I think that not only the players love it and does it give them a, a sense of ownership and control, but I think the fans love it. I think plan the fans love the concept that this is something that's been driven by the players. Um, and I should say in softball, we actually didn't even have coaches. We had, we had facilitators, and that's the model that we're looking for. These captains actually got to make a lot of the decisions about who they pick uh, each week to be on their team and then actually in-game strategy. So in lacrosse, we're looking to have coaches and facilitators, but nonetheless, it's still going to be player-driven even on the field. Now, 22 players were announced as part of the league this week. That leaves 36 additional roster spots available. When do you expect to name more players? Yeah, so so it's a 56-player league, and we will be naming those players over the course of the coming uh, coming months. Um, there are a number of others that um, are, are will be signed before the end of this year. Um, there will likely be some roster spots held for uh, even some some people graduating from from school this year from college. So um, we'll have some rookies that that come out of school and and, and join the league, um, but. We're really fortunate to have signed up who we have. Um, it's uh, it's looking shaping up to be a great group, and you know it's uh, it's exciting for everyone to watch. I just encourage everyone to kind of pay attention, watch us on social, check out our website. We'll be obviously updating on a very regular basis the the player signings. Now, all of this sounds so exciting. I know if I was a player, I'd be jumping at this. But have you guys had any trouble securing some big name players that the league wants because of conflicts, either because of other jobs or sponsorships? Yeah, I would say there, there are a couple of things. I mean, I think we all know, like I said, that, that all these players have other jobs of some sort. Obviously, many of them are coaches uh, at, the college, at the college level. Others have uh, jobs in the lacrosse world or outside the lacrosse world. So the fact that we're asking them to kind of take five weeks and dedicate five weeks, we are going to make time for, for them to, to you know, do what they have to do for their, their college uh, coaching position or even if they have a job. I mean, we're open to being accommodating. It's, this is we, we all realize the, the circumstances everyone's under. But nonetheless, people have to come to market for five weeks, and people aren't necessarily used to that in the world of lacrosse. A lot of people have come in and out, you know, for, for, for game weekend. So that was probably the biggest obstacle. Um, and, of course, like, it's a new format, so it does take a little bit of time. Um, that said, as players have signed on, um, you know, you do get a lot of great momentum, and I think it gives a, a lot of uh, peace of mind and comfort to the new players that are signing that they see so many great players already on board. Now this is starting up at an, at an exciting time with the inaugural season starting right after next year's World Championships. Do you think you'll be able to ride some momentum as you launch those first games? Yeah, I mean, certainly. I think, uh, you know, we listen, we looked in the calendar and, and, you know, that was really the ideal time to start. Um, it really had to do with, you know, coordinating around, you know, college uh, coaching obligations and, and what was really the best time for them. Um, but yeah, absolutely coming out of the world championship, obviously an exciting moment. And, and uh, we certainly hope to be able to ride on the enthusiasm. But listen, there's general enthusiasm among uh, among people at all ages for, for what's going on on the women's side of the game. And, you know, I'm someone who's pretty new to, to, to lacrosse and women's lacrosse. And so I I don't profess to be the expert here. We've got a lot of great people who are working with us. Um, and like I said, the players are going to drive a lot of this. But but I think everyone's, you know, pumped up for, for what, what's coming in, in the summer of uh, 21. Yeah, it all sounds so exciting. Thank you so much for your time, John. Thanks very much for having me.